All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop online sales magazine and pipeline or CRM joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Donna Kelly, who is over on the other coast in beautiful West Palm Beach, which I'm sure is even sunnier uh, than here. Probably. How are you doing, Donald? It's doing well. I mean, looking out the window, it's pretty good today. So yeah, I don't know if it's sunnier. We have a little bit of overcast, but it's still good. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and Don is a seasoned sales professional with a mission to evangelize effective selling methods and motivate sellers of all levels to do big things. He brings a wealth of experience as a former top performing technology sales professional who sold both in public and private sectors. And he's cracked the code on helping Teams thrive in B2B sales, earning recognition from Salesforce as a 2022-2023 top sales influencer and from LinkedIn as a top 22 sales insider. And what we're going to talk about today is every salesperson's favorite subject, outbound. outbound. <laughs> so how can you be effective doing outbound in 2024? So, Don, just to get, get straight into it, right? Outbound sure. has been a has has been perceived as a major struggle for everybody over the past number of years, especially when the whole hype around inbound and stuff happened and and that. And I, I think there's a lot more fear around outbound and probably a lot more mythology around outbound nowadays due to all of that. So um so just bottom line and for for us right now, can you be successful with outbound in 2024? Absolutely. Um, I think you you can definitely be outbound with uh, be successful with outbound in 2024. And you, you should be and many organizations are being successful with it um, as a as a prominent uh, way of doing growing their business, you cannot scale an organization without outbound. And I will go on record saying that you cannot scale an organization without outbound. Yeah, you can grow your business with inbound. But you can't if you want to really want to scale and just like take the organization to the next level. Um, you you get inbound can take you so far outbound is where you want to get to at that point and i'm not saying we don't do inbound so please for those people who jump out and start to say this like you that you don't end the organization there you don't end a conversation there you can scale to a certain level it's probably the better term that i would say but when you do outbound you go on top of that that's why all of the companies no matter who they are they still have an outbound force um, in addition to their inbound capabilities. You would like people to come to you and to know about you, but why in the world Google still has outbound? Um, you know, yeah. I mean, everybody literally goes to their website. So, Absolutely. <laughs> so what? So what are some of the what are some of the uh, things that people should look at that sales organizations should look at? Like, how do you construct an effective outbound strategy given all of the noise, given all of the distractions, mm -hmm. given all of the spamming that's going on from every platform, it seems like, you know, you're getting spammed through LinkedIn, you're getting spammed through text, you're getting obviously spammed through email. How do you uh, construct an effective outbound strategy that can cut through all of that noise and obstacles? Yeah, I feel like salespeople, we're like water. We are going to, if there's a crack, we are going to find a way through that crack. We're going to get in there somehow. And yes, there are many different avenues right now that we can get access to human beings, to our prospects, such as what the first ones were phone or physical visits were back in the days. Then you had phone and then you had email and then you had social that came on in a play and you had text that came in. So all of these things are, um, are means to be able to get a hold of people. The level of effectiveness of efficacy is varies based on others. I'm going to share my theory, things that I mm -hmm. practice and I've seen to work, and I'm going to project that and share that with you all and and, and, and uh, hopefully it can help you. It's not only things that I'm just seeing as theory. I've practiced it. My clients have practiced it. And we see that it's a tradition. It's a, it's a time and time proven method to be able to help get a hold of people. So all of that. The first thing that I like to go back to the principle, I want you to understand the principle. Mm -hmm. You need to treat others the way they want to be treated. The majority of people right now, when they look at email, they look at email as this clutter collection, the clutter box. Yes, we, we do. We all are attack, attached to it. And I'd look at email and I don't see that I, when I get an email, I know if I don't know the person, I know that it's going to be a sales email just automatically. Mm -hmm. And with that, my defense goes up out the gate. If I don't know you, you could be an awesome uh, you know, offer. But if I don't know you, I feel like you're pushing or projecting something on me that I don't necessarily need at that moment. Now, there's going to be a market, right? There's going to be a, a, a certain number of people that are going to be in the need of what you have at that point. And you're... Um, and you're going to send an email and it may land right in that sweet spot and it's ready and they're ready and you can move forward. 
So we we on that we get that we understand mm-hmm. that. So I don't want people to, to rest on and say that's the end of it. But what I do recognize though is we need to get to people who are more likely to buy what we have to offer. Mm-hmm. And in addition to that, we need to get to them the way that they want to be tr- a way that they want to be able to communicate. And we need to identify what that is. And we'll, we'll, I'll show you share my strategy in a second about how we go about identifying what works best for them. Mm-hmm. It allows you you need to do all of them per se at the beginning. But there are methods that help you that's easier. There's gates that people are more likely or more um, open to connecting you, connecting with you um, through that makes it more conducive to start the conversation or the sales dialogue. Am I making sense on this yeah. so far, John? Yeah, no, and uh, great, Donald. Uh, because one of the things I think is that, uh, as you said, these in- inelegant outreaches that are done, uh, where you immediately are got your defenses up because you know it's a it's a sales pitch coming uh, coming your way. Um, I, I think in some ways it's almost uh, self fulfilling prophecies because I think sometimes when people fire these things out, they don't really believe that they're going to have an impact. And if they do say they uh, say it's a they manage to get you on the phone. You don't even, I mean, you even, they even seem sort of surprised that they got you and they mm-hmm. are almost a pot, you know, immediately from the get go, you can tell that they are f- getting ready for you to be defensive. So there's a lot of mixed messages, I think, that come often through through these media. So the and you go back to this, this is going to go, uh, you know, uh, village uh, and uh, community um, <laughs> idea. When we were back at uh, in, in tribal or in, uh, you know, like our village community, say even like 100 years ago, um, 200 years ago, we had our community. We still do. If somebody's outside from that community, ten, we tend to put up our defenses, be a little bit more leery um, of them. When I check my email, John, the first thing that I do is I look for people that I do not know that I can delete. And when I start, when I noticed that behavior, I was like, huh. So then after that, I started asking other people and started checking with others and sharing this idea. And people started to relate like, yeah, I delete the stuff that I don't know so I can get to the people that I, you know, get to my emails, um, the ones that I actually want to reply to, want to take my time to go through. So if this is a case of behaviors are like this and people are trying to get rid of you, how can you get to know someone before they get to the email? And the number one place that I've seen, we start off all of our outreach through LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying, you know, folks might say, well, I've tried that, but go back to what I said before. You not you need to treat others the way they want to be treated. Most people, when they go on LinkedIn and they're reaching out to someone, they're focusing on me, uh, meaning them, themselves. So the strategy that we've adopted is, uh, is a simple one. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys ever have done uh, trick-or-treating, John. Sure. Um, but, you know, like uh, I grew up in I grew up here in South Florida and there's a community called Wellington and Wellington. They have this equestrian community. And, uh, you know, I think Prince Harry was out there like doing a polo you know, a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. But it's a it's an affluent community. But when you go to Wellington for trick or treating, you're going to get some of the best candy because people out right. there have some change in their pocket. Yeah. Now, when you do go out to Wellington and you do go trick or treating, you're not going to every house. You're going to the houses that the lights are on because mm-hmm. that indicates a person is home. Now, this sounds ultra elementary and sounds super simple but i can promise you people don't do it when they, they don't do it when they go on linkedin they're going to houses because there's a house and they're sending them you know knocking on every single door hoping they can get stuff because of the volume but because they're knocking on 100 doors they're probably going to get in the hole of like five ten you know ten people if they knocked on the doors where the people are 10 doors where the lights are on, they probably have a higher chance of getting 100% mm-hmm. with that. So what am I talking about? This is where Sales Navigator comes in. Too often, salespeople are reaching out to people who are not active on LinkedIn and they get ticked off when that person doesn't respond or they say LinkedIn doesn't work. There's 1 billion people with, act, with accounts on LinkedIn and about half of those, so 500 million of those people are active on LinkedIn. There are tools that LinkedIn gives you through Sales Navigator that helps you be able to identify if someone is active on a platform or not. So mm-hmm. I like to look and see if somebody has posted on LinkedIn in the past 30 days. So I, before I even do that, I create my ICP or I create, uh, you know, I, I know who are those people are. Uh, for TSE Studios, that's going to be some VPs of marketing, going to be some marketing directors, uh, folks that may be in that world. Right. Those people, I want to see if they're active on a platform. So I and we have our ideal customer uh type, you know, with industries and so forth that we can adopt. But then I want to see if those people are relatively new to their position. 
because sometimes those people tend to be a little bit more of the ones open to try interesting yeah. stuff or different things, such as having TSC Studios produce content for them. Or it may be that those people are the ones that, um, you know, and and also, and they're posting on a platform. So maybe I did an initial search and it came back with 100,000 individual. That will not be efficient. Mm -hmm. So I do a, a deeper a cut down and I find people who have recently changed jobs. So maybe it drops down to, you know, maybe a, a, a thousand. And then also from that, the people who have posted on a platform. So maybe I have like four. 100. Okay, still manageable, may not be a it may be bigger than I want, but I can still focus on territory. So now I have maybe whittle it down and I have in the Florida area, I have 30 people in South Florida that fell into that category. Now I have some focus accounts yep. that I can focus on. Those people are one on the platform because they're changing their job title Two, they're posting in the past 30 days on the platform. I now have those individuals to connect with. Now, what makes this easy for me to go to the transition to that conversation now to connect with them? Not that dumb message. I see that yeah, you're, yeah. you have mutual connection on LinkedIn. Like anyone could see that. That's dumb. Mm -hmm. That's stupid. Yeah. I'm not going to pay attention to that. You're selling me something. But I'm not saying be, be manipulative, but like be genuine. That's what this platform is all about. It's about mm -hmm. networking. So what I would do at that point, and I've done this and I'm telling you it works. So um what I do at that point is I go back to that post that they shared. It doesn't matter if it's an automated post that they had, if it's a, a job description that they had, a job post that they posted mm -hmm. out, if it's a, a, a thought or a poll, whatever it is. That human being took the time to be able to automate yeah. it or to post something. Yeah. Nobody in there in the world, no human being don't have enough ego, don't have ego like that. Like people, right. we all have ego. So if I post something, I surely want somebody to engage or comment on it. So that's the first step. And I'm not talking mm -hmm. just like some dumb, you know, engagement, just like it. I'm talking about a thoughtful comment. If you post that you have a job opening, even if you just shared for what the, you know, the HR post, mm -hmm. the, the job description, I can comment on that and I can do some kind of engagement. I say, John, saw so you guys, I might look at it and see you guys are looking for, you know, people, uh, maybe oh, yeah. didn't indicate if they're remote or not. I might say, "Hey, at John, is this position remote? Um, and is there a level yeah. of expert level of um, you know, uh, of interest, a level of expertise that you're looking for?" Yeah. Um, John, for that, can I can I just um, on, on that note because I think this is a really really important and fundamental point for for people here about the whole engagement piece. Sure. Um, uh, as you said, because um, everything you've outlined here is is all sensible, rational, and can be done, right? It takes some work. And I think that's the problem is that a lot of mm -hmm. people don't want to do this work. But for me, one of my pet peeves is uh, when somebody comments on a post and they just say, great post. <laughs> you know you know darn well that that person never read a sentence of it and they are just trying to get into your good books in the quickest way possible. And they're probably writing great post on like 20 other ones as well. But to your point is that if, if you actually engage with the content and comment on it properly and whatever, that is huge validation to the person who wrote it. They're more likely to take you, you know, to to want to engage with you. If you write great post, they're just going to go. Yeah, thanks for not reading it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know now that you did not read it, Donald. Yeah. Like, OK. And, and yeah. I've done that before. I've, I've, I've done the great post. I fall in a category. And that's why I was able to laugh because you're, you're right. You may be just running through it and you just like, you know, speeding through it and you're just not given that time. But when you take that moment, though, yeah. and you start that engagement, magic starts happening. What I found that makes better posts, um, better comments is uh, I'm trying to become a better commenter, um, yeah. a, a better engager. And one thing that I found, um, and one of my buddies have done this, where he he finds these reels and all he comments on these reels, and usually he's the one I start a new thread and on on those reels. And it, I don't know if you uh, see human behavior with this people behavior, but I sure do it. I might look at a video or a post, and then I quickly go to the comment. And most people do that. They're like, yeah. "Man, I should have checked the comment first because the comments usually hilarious, right? Yeah, yeah. People want to do that. So what I try to look at is if I if you have that job description, if I do one thing, if I at you and ask you a question not like some dumb question like hey um is this a job posting <laughs> like of course it's a job posting. <laughs> but if, but if you did like if you did something you know it might it maybe it doesn't indicate a position i might say john do you know if they're looking for somebody with python experience for this or you know whatever you know coding even if it's nothing that i know anything about but so you're asking about that and that engages me you might say donald i don't know let me check um, or I check with our marketing team, or you might tell your marketing team, Hey, some guys commented on my post, check that I've gotten your attention. And that's the key. That's the first piece that I want. Now, when I send my connection request to you, I might, I'm going to reference to that. 
Mm -hmm. So again, you're already on a super ultra focus list, the list of people that I'm uh, connected with. People are posted on LinkedIn. I'm engaging on your posts and you're going to grab your attention because that's the first step. I got you got your attention. And then after that attention, I'm going to send a personalized connection request. I'm going to say, um, John saw that uh, commented on a post about the job script about the uh, job post. Um, congrats on the growth that you guys are seeing. Uh, look forward to get your answer. Uh, permission mm -hmm. to connect here on LinkedIn. Yeah. And you're going to probably engage, connect back to me again engagement at this point mm -hmm. and then i might send you a video might put a face with the name hey john want to put a face with the name um appreciate you um good luck with everything saw that uh you, just, you know whatever maybe comment on it saw what you guys are doing i have the reason why i asked about the post is because i have a couple friends that are looking for their next gigs uh, a lot of them are developers um stateside here anyways look forward to hearing from you have a good one like yep you're you're in sales or you're in marketing but you just yeah. posted a thing and, and, and it's just engagement like okay, yeah cool. and, and, and what's what's nice what's what's nice about that donald is it's it's a very human interaction it's a very human and it's a very elegant and it's a it's the way you would interact with people in in real life and uh, or as we used to do and, <laughs> and i think as you said as you said from the outset is is like you know treating people how you would like to be treated and not using you know, LinkedIn is my other, my other pet peeve, to be honest, is the beautiful personal connection request that the minute you accept, you get ding, sales oh. pitch, oh, sales no. pitch from the automated email. <laughs> I can tell like, you like that one. It's like finding a pie and you start eating a pie and you find a roach in it. Like, exactly. oh, disgusting or a hair. It's like, let me throw this whole thing out. Yeah. <laughs> so, but here's the thing though, and I know we're coming up on the end here. Like when I get to the point where I'm talking to somebody and I'm engaging with that person, you're going to probably engage back with me. You're going to accept my connection request. You're probably going to respond to that video and, and say, mm -hmm. hey, Donald, appreciate it. Again, I'll get the information from our team and get back to you. Good. And I'm not going to come and pitch you right out of the gate. I need now to find something relevant for you. Mm -hmm. That's the key. The reason why most emails are not getting open, one, they don't know you and don't trust you. And two, it's not relevant to that person. So now I, what I, I don't pitch on LinkedIn. I will pitch on email. So back that mm -hmm. up. I, I do. I may pitch on LinkedIn if I know the person and if right. I see that there's something and we've engaged. But typically, it's open. It's fair game now to take that to the inbox per se. So a week mm -hmm. go by, and I did find that you guys are hiring not only for um, developers, but you're hiring sales professionals mm -hmm. and your uh, or you know your marketing. So maybe say you're, you're hiring folks for you know content creation or stuff for marketing. Mm -hmm. You're beefing up your marketing squad and you're new to your position. I can make some hypothesis here. I can see some things that you guys are doing. Maybe that you're not, you don't have a podcast or perhaps right. that you're not sharing content on YouTube, but I can come back to that and, and I can um, use that as my subject line. Um, something to the nature of thanks for the job details, dot, dot, dot. You're going to know my name automatically and yeah. you're going to see me that I'm not a stranger. I have the same picture on all my platforms. The branding is there. But then you're going to come, um, I, I'll say, you know, come back into that message and I'll say thanks again for um, for the info on that job. Did share it with my friends. I did notice as well relevancy that you're that you're you know you, you guys are beefing up your marketing team um, when it uh, specifically and that it looks like content creation is a goal for you guys. Um, you know some of our clients mm -hmm. are in the same position or doing the same thing. Out of curiosity, have you ever thought about doing um, creating podcasts or creating um, educational content right. through YouTube or social? And you're more than likely to going to respond to that because it's a simple yes or no question. And you're going to do me the courtesy because we already had an engagement on another platform and you already know me. There's concepts that people are calling. They call it a show me, you know me. Mm -hmm. People believe that. And it goes back to the behavior that you see that I do and other people do where we delete people that we don't know who are pitching us. But because I've entered that part as an engagement, you're going to, you at least owe me to reply to that. And if you don't, I've seen people that don't reply to that email, but they reply on LinkedIn towards right. it. like this is fascinating it's crazy because of that simple fact so that's how i see that email and in that i will do phone call because now i have something valuable to share with you and that it may not say even value valuable use it gets kind of get watered down but i have something relevant to a challenge that you may have and something that you may be trying to fix and i have expertise on this because i'm becoming as a consultant others in the technology space in your industry are doing this type of content stuff is this something that you've thought about and perhaps it's one of the things on your initiative on your radar i don't know exactly yet but i saw some triggers or some sign that indicate that there may be smoke uh maybe fire because of the smoke and that allows me to have a valuable um inter interaction with you at the top 
Yeah. And what I like is, uh, Donna, what, what you've outlined here through the whole thing is, number one is no shortcuts, right? There's no shortcuts. Uh, there is. It, it's hard work. It's it's doing your proper research. It's getting it down to granular, very targeted. It's being it, it's putting in the effort in your engagement and in, in reach uh, reaching out and and putting in putting in that effort, and and then again continuing to treat people like you'd like to be treated and build that rapport, build that uh, build that connection with people, uh, and all those kind of barriers start to come down, right? A hundred percent. It it they do come down and they do feel a little bit more um more natural and people do actually care and people actually do want to work with you and to have conversations with you because they recognize that yeah you're bringing yes you're you're disrupting you're interrupting me as Chris uh, Beal would say yeah we we do interrupt people and because of that there's something uh, and Jeb talks about this too Jeb Blunt. But because of that interruption, it's it is probably something that's worth it for you to interrupt me. And yeah. as I go back in and re review it, I'm like, yeah, of course, I'll take this interruption. It's like me having a flat tire and you can't and I'm on the phone with like trying to find somebody to come and help me. And you come along and say, hey, I can help you fix that flat yeah. tire. Yeah, you interrupted me on a phone call, but it's a good interruption. You're <laughs> fixing it. You're bringing a problem. You're solving a problem that I currently have right now. And that's where I find that people uh, I am. That's where I found that I have been, and clients that I've worked with have been, where we don't do that, and we want, we mm -hmm. feel that our product is great. So therefore, we feel if we send an email, you have the right and authority. You, you know, you should. I I should have the expectation that you should reply to my email, even though there's nothing in it for you. It's only in it for me um, yeah, to get yeah. an appointment, and that doesn't work. So show me you know me. Bring me some kind of value, uh, some kind of a relevancy to towards me, and 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 bring me some information that I may not necessarily know. How content can you know help uh, is you know help increase the marketing uh, you know brand awareness by you know forty seven percent like or whatever. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, absolutely. No, this is fantastic. Um, listen, thanks very much, Donald. Everything yeah, man. Well, great insights, great practical insights. All of Donald's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, we run a uh, podcast. Uh, we, we sorry, we have a sales podcast called The Sales Evangelist, and I have uh, we have a sales training firm um, where we help clients across the globe. Usually, uh, a lot of our clients are top of funnel, looking for top of, top of funnel help um, when it comes towards outbound and outreach, and that's where we teach them. And subsequently, because we have created amazing content over the years, clients have reached out to us. And about four years ago, we started TSC Studios, and we produce uh, our, we have an agency as well that produces content for other brands. So it's been fun, and it's great. And uh, we love selling. Yeah, and I would uh, I would encourage you to go check out uh, Donald and check out TSC Studios. Uh, as you can tell, you know, a lot of thought has gone into this whole <laughs> approach. And you know, you listen, I'll tell you what, for the rest of today, monitor your email and all the outreach <laughs> that comes your way and see that none of it is going to be what Donald outlined there. So maybe you need to go talk to him. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, listen, thanks again, Donna. Thank you for watching, listening, and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me, John.